Thou will show me the path of life. Listen to that. They are raised the path of life, right? Then you are praying that God will do what? Show you. Why? Because you know that path is what makes life worth living. You understand what that means? And you pray that prayer. You see, when we are in situations and circumstances, sometimes the pray, the way we pray, the prayer we pray is the reason why God is not answering us. Because we are not praying prayers that will bring answers to our situations. That will show me the part of life. There is a part that when you walk in it, it makes life worth living. Why are you praying to God? Or why is he praying to God to show him the path of life? If you are going to say to somebody, you will show me the road path to downtown, right? It's because you know the person knows the place. Or by the time you look at that person, you size him up, that dish you know what I'm talking about, right? So when he's praying to God, Lord, that will show me the path of life, he has saying that God holds life and all that goes with it in his hands. So that's why he said you see that word there because in your presence is the fullness of joy. In whose presence? God. God. There is in his presence what is called the fullness of joy. Not managing it, not short changed, not a little of it, the fullness of it. That is, if you can get to his presence, you will encounter that fullness. Not only that, and at thy right hand, now if I say in my presence or at my right hand, what am I saying? I'm practically saying the same. Because for you to get something from my right hand, you must be in my presence. Are, are you following me now? Yeah. So it's just a way of expression. And at the right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. That means when you come into his presence, you encounter the fullness of joy and something is also given to you. Because at the right hand means, and is for what? Given. To deliver to you. Is you can be in my presence and I'm like this, right? That does not mean I'm giving you anything. But when I bring my hand into it, the hand is for transfer. You understand what I'm saying? So in his presence is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, when you come before him, you are loaded with pleasures. So whatever you need, or whenever you need to have anything, you need to know where to go find it. Is that not so? I mean, if I need to buy a projector, for example, now, uh, I say, where do they get projectors? Is that not what I'm going to ask you? And then you say, no, 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 don't buy pro, don't go to, you say, go to Walmart. You say, no, 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 no. Maybe you go to Best Buy. You understand me? Because there is where you go get it. You need to know. That's how sim as simple as it can be. You are praying to God for one thing or the other, right? You need to know whether he has it. You understand me? You, you, uh, 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 somebody wants to have a child so because I, I've been married for many years, no child, and it, it, you see people go to different places for it. You understand me? They go to different places. You call somebody say, you need to believe God. He said, no, you're all just believing, believing. No, no, no. And he wants to go somewhere else. Because that's where perhaps she feels she can get it. You need to know to go to where what you are looking for can be found. And I tell you, the fullness of joy is in his presence. The pleasures that you are looking for can be found in his presence. At his right hand, that's what he says, which also means his presence. Hear what God himself said about his presence. Exodus 33. This was when the children of Israel just left um, Egypt. I'm going to read verses 14 and 15. When the children of Israel just left Egypt, and um, Moses, I perceive, stood one day and said, excuse me. He looked back, he saw well over 2 million people. I think that's the estimate we have been given by Bible scholars, right? And he looked at where they are going. No house, no covering. Are you following me? No food, nothing. Nothing. And Moses began to pant that what's going to happen here. How are we going to survive? And perhaps you remember most of the other people who have been crying on Moses. Have you brought us to the wilderness to destroy us? Why shouldn't you have left us in, in Egypt where there is fish and garlic and cucumber and all those things? And Moses looked and he was overwhelmed. And then God spoke with him, to him rather, verse 14. What did God say? My presence will go with you. Can you see how simply that can be put? Eh? 
my presence, if it's somebody like some of you that I'm looking at, you say, your presence has been with us. I, I'm, that's not what I'm talking I say, give us physical food or give us something. God said, that's not what you're after. My presence, which is what we said in Psalm 16. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. And God knows exactly what he was saying. He said, my presence will go with you. That means when his presence is there, this thing we read, we just read in Psalm 16, the fullness of joy is there, the pleasures they are looking for evermore, they are there. They are all in that word called his presence. That means everything he has is there. Look at He said, my presence shall go with you. And what will happen with that? And I will give you rest. Did you see that? I will. That means in his presence, rest is a chief possibility. It's cheaply attained. And rest means you have ceased from your own labors. Amen. Rest means he's working for you, but you are not the one working it. And you are getting the result. That's what rest. And if you look at it, when they were on that journey, they really had rest. Their legs, their feet did not outgrow their shoe. Can you imagine? Are you following me? When they needed wheels, the wind will blow it to their camp. Then they will travel another mile. The wind will still blow it to where they are. You understand me? Eh? They, they didn't have to go look for it. They didn't have to go like hunting for it. No, it came to them. The, their water, water, their, their water system, or what do you call it? Their water corporation was following them. Can you imagine? Is that not rest? You know that rock. The Bible says, and that rock that followed them was Christ. And that's the rock. They, they spoke to it, water came. You understand what I'm saying? That's right. They were not working anything. It was working for them because of his presence. May that presence be known with him. Amen. 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 He said, my presence will go with thee and I will give you rest. And Moses said unto him, okay, if your presence is not going with us, we are not going because we will so suffer. You get, you see, I just wanted to follow me because, well, there is... We are to go to to secure help, which will greatly transform your life and destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. We are on a journey of life. We are on the journey of destiny. And we need to know. That means that um, you will enjoy the more of the manifestations of His grace and His goodness when His presence is with us on the journey. Amen. If you check your Bible correctly, as long as His presence was with them, even the wild beasts could not even attack them. The wild beasts were only to attack those who are left out of that presence. You know the story. Everything was provided. You will not lack. Amen. When you have his presence, then you have his guidance. Our bishop will say, you can't have his presence and miss your target. It works for you. Psalm 139. His presence and his spirit commands the same. Verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Because his presence, I'm getting to my to the nitty-gritty of my message now, is what communicates his help. Or his helps. God's help, which you must know, is your greatest asset in life and ministry. The help of God. The help. It is the help of God that makes you accomplish things, great things in life and ministry. Paul speaking, First Corinthians fifteen ten. He said, "I am what I am by the help of by the grace of God." Is that right? I am what I am by the grace of God. And you know what does the grace of God do? It communicates the help of God. I'm going to show you that very clearly. When you are talking of the grace of God, what the grace of God does is to communicate to you the help of God. You know, help is you have what to do. For example, I may want to lift this podium now. It's heavier. That what I can carry and I need his help, right? He comes to help me either we carry it directly or he carries it for me. Help means the purpose is accomplished. You understand?